Are you ready to ruminate on rice changers for 10 minutes? I know I am, and that's what I'll do in episode 62 of the Doofy Doo Talk Through of Sheer and the Wanderer. Hey there, it's Doofy, and I am more than halfway through this very generous, so far, naked run through Table Mountain. I'm in the process of unlocking the Scroll of Destruction. Since this is an official rite of passage, I will go ahead and let this cutscene play out. This episode, I'm going to talk about the most iconic monster in the entire Sheeran series. There are a lot of pretty iconic monsters in video gaming. Uh, the Medusa Head from Castlevania. Everyone remembers those things. <laughs> uh, Koopa Troopas and Super Mario Brothers are pretty notable for being able to be used uh, as a tool and also as a device to get extra lives. So that's kind of... A new thing for the time, that you could use an enemy to your own advantage. Everyone remembers their first encounter with the dogs in Resident Evil, as I said. Also Nemesis from Resident Evil 3 is pretty memorable, even though the game itself was not very good. Resident Evil has a lot of enemies, actually, that you remember. <laughs> um, what are some other iconic monsters? Most people remember a lot of boss encounters. The first encounter with Mother Brain in Metroid is very memorable. And depending on your age, you might remember the encounter with Mother Brain in Super Metroid. That was notable for being kind of a dialogue-free cutscene that really got all emotional. With the little baby Metroid coming back. Oh, did I spoil it? <laughs> I'm sorry if you haven't played that yet. Just as a side note, you've probably noticed most of my examples are from Nintendo games. And mostly from the 8-bit era. I am a, or I was, a huge Nintendo fanboy. I was a uh, preteen in the NES days. That's usually the time when you kind of uh, develop the things that you idolize the most when you're like 13, 14, 15. Anything you liked during that period of your life, you know, that becomes sort of sacred material. You're like, don't you dare speak ill of Thundercats or whatever you happen to watch at that time in your life. SpongeBob, Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> Some of you are younger than me. I feel like they've fallen a long way, but I still have a lot of respect for them. I think Nintendo is really the only, or one of the few developers left, that develops games based on gameplay first. You know, they come up with a gameplay model, they think of games as toys, first, and they make sure that it's fun to play the game, regardless of whatever kind of placeholder graphics they have in place. And then they just slap their regular iconic Mario or whatever Zelda Metroid characters on top of that formula. Not Metroid so much, <laughs> but Mario usually. And uh, that means a lot of the other areas of the game suffer. Story and coherence and logic. But fundamentally the most important thing to them is that the game is fun to actually play. It's a toy. It should be fun to play regardless of the graphics. And uh, I think that's a good approach. Oh, ho, look at this, a fluffa bunny sandwich. This is a good chance maybe to get some experience. Let me see. I think I'm going to squish this fluffy bunny. <laughs> and now, oh, maybe he will kill his buddy. Let's see. Oh, yeah. All right, Doofy. Don't get yourself into a critical turn. I'm almost positive I have a... Staff of Sloth somewhere. Where is it? Um, <laughs> there it is. All right, I'm gonna slow down this Giga Head. He should go down pretty quickly. I'm powered up. Woo! -hoo! Yeah, uh, this run has been a piece of cake so far. Maybe I'm gonna jinx myself. <laughs> Good idea to put on your best shield before you go to the next floor, just in case you end up uh, surrounded. But I seem to be fine. Another armband. Wow, this... I think maybe while I was running through Scroll Cave and Bufu's Cave, all the items that you get with each run were kind of being stored up. Because I seem to be getting a lot of items this run. Although it is another useless armband. That's probably the most useless armband. The armband of Calm. I don't really care about being confused. <laughs> because when you're confused, you can still shoot arrows and swing your staff in the right direction. It's like... Confusion means almost nothing. But uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, I still have some respect for Nintendo. Uh, their games are very simple, very deep. They're toys first. The gameplay is fun. It's not overly complicated. And if you 
strip down the graphics, usually the graphics in Nintendo games are pretty stylized anyway, but even if it was just stripped all the way back down to uh, really primitive graphics, it would still be fun to play because that's what they make sure happens first. And I feel like a lot of more modern 3D games, they reward you with little achievements and checklists. The graphics are very impressive, you know, you produce a lot of really uh, vivid imagery, uh, sometimes violent, which I don't mind, and a lot of explosions and a lot of wacky things you can do in open world sandbox games. But if you really strip down the graphics to be extremely primitive, is the gameplay actually fun? Is the combat in Skyrim actually fun? No, it's horrible. I can't take it at all. It's just, ugh. It's just so imprecise and poorly balanced. Ugh. <laughs> Although there's another armband. Oh my gosh. And another armband on the island, too. Man, I... I think it is, I think with every new run through Table Mountain, it's giving you another item, but because all of my additional runs were not in Table Mountain, I think they're all just showing up right now. Because I thought there'd be more variety, but I didn't think there'd be this much variety. It's just ridiculous. Let's see what this is. An antidote armband. I seem to be getting the worst armbands, but I am getting a lot of them. <laughs> and, uh... What was I talking about? Oh yeah, before you jump down my throat, a lot of that is due to the shift to 3D graphics. It's hard to make really crisp, um, crisp feeling motions in a 3D game where you feel like you push the button and something happens immediately, like you could in older 8-bit and 16-bit games. Because you have to kind of wait for this more elaborate animation to play out. But even taking that into account, a lot of AAA developers just don't care about gameplay. The combat in uh, Assassin's Creed, where all the enemies just kind of stand around you and attack you one at a time, that is ludicrous. It makes me laugh. He's like the worst assassin ever. <laughs> oh, and then when you're running away and they're all chasing you around, it's, it reminds me of Benny Hill, if you've ever seen that old show. At the end, there's always like a high-speed chase where they speed up the camera. Uh, I cannot take any Assassin's Creed game seriously. The exploration is great, the graphics are great, but the gameplay from moment to moment is just so sloppy. <laughs> uh, it makes me laugh, and I love a lot of people take those games really seriously, so... If you like those, that's cool, but I just cannot get into those games. Even the Batman games, which uh, again have great exploration, they're pretty good games overall, but the combat is just kind of silly. I know uh, there is some depth to it, but it doesn't feel good. When you compare that to something like, uh, let me think of something more timely, like Bayonetta. So Bayonetta 2 is coming out. I am trying to resist the hype as strong as I can, but I think I'm afraid I might actually buy a Wii U just to play Bayonetta and Bayonetta 2. I never played the original for any length of time because the 360 controller is probably the worst controller ever made. Those buttons feel terrible. <laughs> and uh, the PS3 version is, has frame rate issues. So I never played the first Bayonetta much. Oh, here is an interesting promiscuous situation. <laughs> Rocky Holder is holding me. We got uh, Lilik approaching from the south, and then it was almost like a chess position. <laughs> we got a burly smurf in position to beat me. Paralyzed burly smurf. Rocky Holder is not going to do much damage, so uh, let's see. I think I'll just postpone the Lilik. I could doppelganger it, but nah, I'll postpone it. Then there's no danger of it. Attacking me, there are some more enemies down there too approaching, so I need to take care of Rocky Holder and get to a safe spot. Problem solved! But yeah, once a year around my birthday, my birthday is coming up, I let myself slide back into being like a, <laughs> a true gamer and I play a game like nonstop for a day or two around my birthday. I think the game this year is gonna be Bayonetta 2. I've been trying to resist the hype, but that's an example of a 3D game that feels really crisp. You push the button and you feel like something is happening immediately. It's kind of uh, almost classic gameplay with uh, more modern graphics. The last 
action game I played that I really enjoyed was Beautiful Joe. That should tell you how long ago it was when I was still playing games regularly. Uh, I really only play games like maybe half an hour to an hour a week now, and it's just Sheeran. Uh, the rest of the time, I'm doing other things. But when I was younger, I had time to play games almost nonstop. <laughs> I had a lot of extra time. I was not quite as driven in my career. So uh, once a year, I pay homage to those old times, and I play a game with no restraint. So it might be Bayonetta 2 this year, I'm thinking. Ugh, I've tried really hard to resist all the hype. But I'm gonna give in, I think. <laughs> and I'm gonna buy an oh, at least it was a regular landmine. I'm gonna buy an entire system just for one game. There's really no other game, maybe Zombie U. I'm kind of curious, even though I know it's probably not gonna be that good. Oh, and I'll probably try Wonderful 101, because Platinum and Beautiful Joe. I'm not really into Mario Kart and Smash Brothers outside of a group setting, so I'll just be playing four games, really. Bayonetta 1 and 2, Zombie U, and Wonderful 101. It'll be so worth it, though, heh <laughs> hopefully. Anyway, I got way off track there. What was I originally talking about? Oh, iconic monsters in games. Uh, the most iconic monster in the Sheer and the Wander series is the Rice Changer. And for my money, the Rice Changer is the most memorable monster in any game series. And I've played a lot of games. Uh, not recent games, but older games. I've played quite a few. <laughs> And the Rice Changer sums up everything about Sheer and the Wanderer so perfectly. In order to really explain that, we'll have to think, what is Sheer and the Wanderer really about? You know, it's a roguelike. What is a roguelike? Well, first of all, and fundamentally, pain sharing, eh? I know exactly what to call you. I will call it the Masochisto Staff. This has to be some kind of record for me naming a staff. So what is a roguelike? It is a game about exploration. It's just a game about seeing how deep you can get into a dungeon and seeing what kind of monsters and items you find. But mainly you're just trying to progress through the dungeon. Now how is the game encouraging you to progress through the dungeon? I mean, there are certainly achievers out there, if they were allowed to, who would sit on the floors one and two and grind mammals and pit mammals and mini robbers and chintalas whatever show up until they got their level up really high just so they wouldn't uh, have to worry about later monsters oh perfect timing you can see already here one system that discourages that the hunger system this is going to be a hunger limited run so uh <laughs> i'll have to talk about how the game encourages you to keep moving next episode Real quick, you can see how powerful again postpone plus switching is. I am going to save right here. I'm almost at 15 minutes, and I'll continue talking about the rice changer next time on Sheer and the Wanderer. See you then. It shows up on floor number five, the orange and shiny type. If you have the time, put all your jars on the floor. Headbutting and barfing, that's all it can do, but it won't have to do much more. So many have stopped to eat the food they thought they got for free. That monster is weird. It can be killed by the throw of a rice ball. It's making you fatter, but without any staffs, you aren't going to get too far. Uh-oh, here it comes. Don't let it destroy your stuff. Maybe you should run. It's a rice changer. Ha-ha! <laughs> Look at this, a fluff of bunny sandwich. <laughs>